Hello everyone. Today off the top of my plane pile comes a Stanley number one. This is something you don't see every day and uh, definitely don't restore them every day. So let's take a look at it. Measuring about five and three eighths inches long, the number one is the smallest bench plane that Stanley made. Not sure why they would have made such a small plane because the tote is far too small to get a hand on and it's much easier to use a uh, block plane but it's a good thing Stanley made them because they are the most collectible of all planes as you might have noticed this plane is intact doesn't appear to be missing any parts but somebody decided to paint it this lovely blue and here's a look at the base and it appears to be an early Stanley Sweetheart which those are my favorite plane I like the Sweethearts let's break this one down here's what the old number one looks like all taken apart a little bit more than the robin egg blue I notice that there is yellow and gold underneath and this plane has been used look at the mess that was there around the frog there's the frog, the irons look, the iron looks good that's all the parts and the next thing I'm gonna do is remove paint yep there's nothing like having a little stripper in your workshop well and there is what it looks like when it's being stripped. So there was more than just the robin egg blue, yellow and gold. There's also a dark green and red. So at least five different paints on this old number one. So letting the chemical do its work. No choice when uh, you get something like this it's going to be a total restoration so one coat of stripper is done and removed and got to go on for a second one and there's a sixth color there is gray so that's simply amazing I would love to know the story behind why this thing had six coats of different color paint on it Stanley number one and there she is with the second coat of stripper applied. And here's the frog and body after the second uh, stripper application. The next thing I'm going to do is put it into the bead blaster. And here's the body and frog after the bead blaster. Looking pretty good. The next step for these parts is a light lapping of the machine surfaces a soft wire brush and some steel wool to prep the other surfaces for paint and here's how it looks ready for the finish came out pretty good the next step is masking tape for the painting a little attention to detail pays off when masking off your plain parts before putting a finish on them you don't want paint going where it's not supposed to go and these parts are ready to have a finish put on them. Coat. I'm going to end up putting anywhere from usually about six to eight light coats on the parts. There are several Japaning recipes on that you can find if you search hard enough. I don't use them. It's taken me several years to come up with a finishing technique that I like that gives the same look as Japaning. But the modern finishes are, are better than Japaning. So while the finishes are drying on the frog and the base and multiples are being applied, next step is I'm going to work on the tote and the knob. This is how they looked after uh, two applications of stripper. Overall they look good. The knob does have a pretty decent sized ding out of the side of it it's going to be hard to see 
there's a better look I'm gonna see what I can do to make that go away here's what the tote knob looked like after uh, I lightly scraped them and uh, a light sanding and steel wool so I'm going to work on that dent right there on the knob and also on the tote there's a small dent right there on the top of the horn just gonna look better if they were taken care of so I'm mixing up a little rosewood dust and glue and I'm gonna patch those in and there's where the rosewood dust comes from just imagine that used to be a full-size tote when I started doing this not really and there they are with the rosewood paste applied now I'm gonna work on the lever cap because this plane is a total restoration I'm not going to worry about saving patina that's a lost cause so this is going to be cleaned up to look almost like new again and in order to do that the place to start is by putting it in my bead blaster okay so I have bead blasted the lever cap I'll take a look at the back side looks a lot better and also I applied the third coat of finish to the body and the frog next step on this is going to be to uh, clean it up and try to make it look like new again and here's a look at it all cleaned up side lever caps ready to put back on a plane and go to work next I'm going to clean up the iron and the iron cap and sharpen the iron there's a look at the back side so I just sprayed the final coat on the frog and the body. They just need to dry. And I finished cleaning and sharpening the iron and the iron cap. This is what they look like. And there's a look at the back side. The next thing to clean up is all the small parts. So the small parts have been cleaned up. I got them oiled. They're going to sit for a while. I'm about three hours into this project to the number one restoration. It's well along the way. Still waiting for the rosewood paste to dry on the tote knob. The base and the frog are done with the uh, new finish application, but still more work to do before they're actually done and looking like they're supposed to. The base and frog have been rubbed down with some 3 aught steel wool and then coated with an oil mixture that I use. And the tote and knob have got their first coat of lacquer. So there it is. I stripped off six coats of paint and uh, totally restored the old Stanley number no. one. I uh, reproduced the sweetheart decals for the tote. And it came out just flat out beautiful. There's all the small parts. Frog lever cap, base, iron cap iron, nice strong sweetheart stamp. There's the back side of the base and the frog. Just got to put the frog back together. Good throat. All that's left to do is to uh, put this old number one back together. And there she is, all done. What a beautiful Stanley number one. Who'd ever known underneath? That's six coats of different colored paint it would be this fine looking plane. We could look at it from all sides and look from the bottom. All that's left to do with this old beauty is give it a test drive. It's not every day you get the plane with the number one. So I've got a three quarter inch piece of walnut and vice. Let's see what the old number one will do.
So the shavings piled up and it seemed to perform quite well. Not bad for an old number one. Here's what she does. The number one is done. It turned out absolutely beautiful. This one will be listed on eBay in March. So I gotta look and see what the next thing's gonna be off the pile. Thanks for watching. Bye.